Welcome to another edition of the Perpcast. I'm your host, Ray, the social media and PR manager for Perp Games. We're back for another episode of a new show to further show our support to the wider games and virtual reality industry. Last week, we chatted to Polish Paul about some of his most loved games, his new house and his channel. And this week, we're absolutely delighted to have the leader of the game cats of us, Brian Paul from PSVR about parole. How's it going, Brian? Pretty good, man. The leader of the game cats is a pretty regal title. I really like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty good, man. Is is that how you define yourself? Are you the leader of the game cats? Do you have a I, title? I, no, no. I'm just I'm just some guy that loves video games that makes YouTube content out of his house. <laughs> and for some reason, people started watching. It's very very crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I shouldn't be. I should never should never be considered the leader of anything. Let me tell you that. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I do have to say, Ray, that I'm 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 getting a little suspicious of you. Every time we talk, you're like, "Oh, my uh, my webcam is broken." So I think I'm gonna sick Neve and Max from Catfish on you and see if you're really who you turn out to be. <laughs> I know, right? I'm probably like the faceless man. You're Real so suspicious over here. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> You have to hold up a sign that says meow or something for me to believe it's really you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it was really great to have you with us today. Thanks for joining us today, man. Um, so as ever, we're going to be covering what's happening in the world of Perp, answering your questions directly. But we'll also be taking a look at the wider world of VR and exploring how this emerging technology continues to grow. I'm going to get rid of the disclaimer stuff again, as we always say this on the show. It's very important to note that not everything you hear about during today's show means we're in any way affiliated with these titles, companies, or individuals, much like our role at the VR Game Show case we're just exploring the wider possibilities helping to spread the word and offering a new platform for some of the week's breaking stories and there were some amazing breaking stories this week if you watched state to play yesterday i'm sure you know exactly <laughs> what we're talking about all right enough of that let's just get into stuff so we'll kick it off i guess with some perp news because this is also a pretty big story i mean perp games and servius have forming a new strategic alliance so that means that present and future servius games coming to market on psvr through perp games what did you think about this brian what, what were your thoughts i mean i'm sure that you know anyone who's watched the channel already knows that i'm a huge uh, proponent of like collecting physical games you know it's like i I, it it breaks my heart every time i see a comment that says well until this comes out physically i'm not going to buy it (laughs) right so uh so it's it's really nice to see that there's a company out there that's doing the work that you guys are doing um it it sounds like wow it really sounds like i'm kissing butt right now but it's for (laughs) it's for real man like i love i love physical media i love like being able to take that game and put it up on my shelf and uh and when when you guys announced that you're going to be publishing battle wake i was like wow that's such a huge grab like that's that's such a cool uh, I mean, Servios is obviously such an amazing developer, um, and so for to, to team up with them and do anything at all is amazing. Um, but but Battle Wake is, I mean, I'm sure you've played Battle Wake. Yeah. It's so yeah. much fun, Absolutely. right? And to have, be able to put that up on my shelf is going to be awesome. Yeah, and I think it's because Servios have got such an incredible pedigree in the industry. Uh, I, I think for me, it was just such an exciting game to publish. Uh, it, it's 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 one of the most talked about VR games of the year for sure, and I feel like it's a game that's really been getting a lot of momentum via streamers, via uh, people playing it online, but word of mouth, just to be able to bring that to physical territories in a, in a few months is, is really more, it, it further solidifies that in some ways, I feel. No, for sure, for sure. I mean, I, I don't think any game has ever captured the feeling of being a pirate, I mean, the way they do, you know, and, and the, the locomotion system is, I was, I was a little concerned leading up to launch, there was some mixed messaging about how you were actually going to control these ships, and, uh, and having those two anchors that basically act as like emergency brake it feels like you're drifting out on the high seas you know it's like tokyo drift or something like that but Mm. like as a pirate um it's it's very cool and being able to pull those things and 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 turn the wheel and there's there's something very very natural about the way they pulled that off and uh i mean if you're not playing this game with move controllers you're missing out (laughs) yeah and i feel that's such a big feel uh, with games in general i feel like the move controllers really do contribute so much to 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 vr i mean i know a lot of people do actually still just play with their dualshock 4 and i feel that if you're not having those move controllers like you say you're almost missing out on, on so many you know different experiences and, and, and ways to approach and play games and, and Battle Wake is definitely one of those games that benefits from that. Yeah oh don't yeah don't get me wrong like for anyone out there with that doesn't have move controllers like you are talking right now to the laziest gamer of all time like <laughs> nothing nothing makes me happier than just to kick back on my couch like even when I play Skyrim I don't want to play Skyrim for an hour or two at a time so uh, I generally opt to you know leave the move controllers charging and take my DualShock 4, kick back on my couch, put the headset on, and just play for six hours straight, you know? So, like, I, I totally get it, you know, if you're not if you're not a move person, but Battle League specifically just has such a unique feel to it 
that uh, you, you are missing something when you don't use the uh, new controllers. I suppose that's an interesting point as well because obviously we, we've just mentioned there that some people don't necessarily have a move controller and some people are using a dual shock foot but uh, it's interesting in some ways like on a level playing field it's like do, do you feel as someone who uses a move controller compared to someone who uses a controller do you sometimes feel like you have more of an advantage in, in, in a multiplayer game do you feel that that doesn't translate when you play a game? I guess it depends on the game right because uh, the, the move controllers obviously require in the moves and the end controller require like some physical dexterity and, and actual like movement whether it be turning or uh, or whatever it is um, but then but then with the dual shock 4 uh, you know you've got you've not only do you have the analog sticks there but it's a control it's a controller that you're I've, I've been a PlayStation guy since since PS1 um, and so nothing feels more natural than a dual shock 4 in my hand um, so I think it's really just whatever you're comfortable with um, you'd be I think you'd be really surprised uh, if we if we put this question out if we post it to the community what their response would be, you know, I, I guarantee you would be split right down the middle. That ha it would be half and half. Be like, oh yeah, you know, the move controllers give you so much more precision. And then everyone else is like, well, yeah, but the Dual Shock Four is like second nature. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I, I think, like you say, it's what you're comfortable with, right? And it's what you're used yeah. to. But, um, but yeah, I think the other cool thing as well, obviously, we haven't touched upon, is also that Perk Games have confirmed that we are also publishing The Walking Dead Onslaught, which is the official VR game based on the AMC television series. People may already know we actually worked with Servius at Gamescom uh, to actually demonstrate this to, to media partners. Uh, so this is this is a huge, huge deal for us, obviously. Uh, getting to work with a massive, massive franchise at The Walking Dead is extremely exciting for me personally, because I'm a big fan of the show, but also just the fact that this is one of the most exciting upcoming VR games at the moment, right? And I think you, you and your viewers have uh, talked about this in the past. Well, I, I will. what I will say about uh, The Walking Dead that is uh, first of all i mean it's i don't i don't think there's any platform in the world that, that has a shortage of zombie games right but i mean for me there's never enough of them i'm like yeah, that's fine man just keep bringing the zombies on but there's something that looks very interesting about the walking dead onslaught i mean first of all you know when, when it comes from a developer like servios you're like okay it's going to be quality we know that but then the question is is well what are you actually doing in this game from you know moment to moment mm. and all we've really seen is a whole lot of melee combat which looks gruesome and every kill looks unique and uh, and i'm and i'm really excited to check it out but man like i'm kind of i'm so curious to see what this game offers beneath that like how much depth is there like is there anything to do other than just kill a bunch of zombies like am i looking for keys to open doors am i trying to create shelters i have no idea it's a big mystery to me uh, and i think the mystery is what the, what excites me the most about it but i think the, if, if you're talking about how gruesome the game is if, you've probably seen the video from game attack vr where actually the developer's watching his own game and even he is looking squeamish at it and i'm just <laughs> thinking that was absolutely hilarious it's like man you're actually you're actually finding your own creation disgusting so i mean i've actually found that when, when watching the behind the scenes stuff with the show like a lot of people do the costumes and things like that and they're actually kind of repulsed and a bit surprised by how like how realistic things can look uh, and, and I guess that kind of really shows that Servius were the right team to work on this because you know that they've really a they've captured that brutality and that and that that gruesomeness but also that they're also kind of watching it back and thinking damn this actually is really graphic <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, from what obviously is there as you mentioned the, the melee combat is a big part of it and it's a big part of uh, what, what Servius are using to promote the game we're really really looking forward to seeing you know how serious continue to to add to that but yeah but that is a game that is coming to playstation vr in the future so uh, looking forward to seeing more about that as that comes just want to make it clear that working with service is it's a huge deal for us it's probably one of the biggest announcements we have made as a company since we've launched and i'm just absolutely delighted to work with with, with the team uh with the wider team and uh Looking forward to seeing what the future holds for yeah. sure. No, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to uh, per Perp Games is a uh, and and I, I, maybe you can give me a little bit more information here. But uh, obviously, Perp Games isn't uh, a company I was familiar with until PlayStation VR rolled around, and you guys were pretty much you know one of the very very few companies bringing physical PSVR games to retail. Um, was have, have Perp Games been around for a while? Uh, like, what, was you guys doing stuff like way before PSVR, or is this kind of a, a newer company? I, I, I'm probably not the best person to give the, the full story. My, my manager has, has given this story many times, so I'm kind of just going to take some tidbits from what, what I've overheard him say. <laughs> but essentially, um, Pip Games, um, she started out as a consultancy firm many years ago, and it's sort of grown from being a consultancy firm within the industry to eventually just becoming a, a publisher in, in the PlayStation VR scene. And, and also, we, we've done other games like uh, you may have seen already, we, we published Ultra Wings on Switch this year, uh, some of the games on PlayStation 
PlayStation 4 and VR compatible so you can actually play them without like Downward Spiral and Don't Knock Twice. But, you know, over time, I feel like we've become recognized as a company that distributes and publishes VR games in general. As a a kind of a lead in, yeah, it wasn't, it's certainly not a company that began life as a publisher. It's something that over time we've kind of naturally grown into it's 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 it's, it's a great it's it, the growth has just been incredible and i feel like you know I've, I've been very fortunate to be able to work on games like moss and fruit ninja and ghost giant and sorrento and and now working with 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 service it's it just seems to just go from strength to strength so it's it's really really cool nice. yeah you guys are definitely hitting your stride if you didn't already hit your stride a while ago <laughs> for sure man it's it's it's, a, it's awesome so yeah but that's that's a that's our big news this week we're forming a strategic partnership with Servius. so uh, more news to come on that in the coming weeks for sure uh, to look at some of the wider news, though, uh, we've naturally kind of led ourselves to state of play here, uh, which I, I know you uh, did a live stream on last mm. night. So if you've not watched that, make sure you go to Without Parole's <laughs> channel and watch that because he gives a lot of feedback on that with uh, Dave Station and AJ. Really, really cool stuff. But we're going to kind of have a little bit of an overview of things that popped up on the show. Uh, and I guess it makes sense to jump into VR since we were just talking about VR. So what were your exp- I didn't actually have a lot of expectations coming into this uh, this show for VR I mean I know that Last of Us was kind of like a feature part of it but in terms of VR I, I didn't don't think I had any expectations yeah you know I'm, I gotta say I'm really really proud of Sony because after that first state of play when they were uh, they had that huge backlash from the community because it was all PlayStation VR related uh, I was like we're never going to see PlayStation VR in another one of these state of plays again <laughs> like but man they have not backed off they've, they've done nothing but shown their commitment to PlayStation VR over and over and over again and, you know just being like you know with a pretty devil may care uh attitude about the whole thing it's it, they're just like this is something we believe in and uh and, and for the people who are also believers you know here's the stuff that you're excited about um and, and the fact that the show started off i hope i'm not jumping the gun but the show when the show started off and it was that animation from humanity that they'd been teasing the state of play with like none of us had any idea that that teaser was actually teasing a game yeah and exactly yeah that was, that was exactly my fault yeah yeah and it was like, I mean, I got goosebumps. I was like, this is, oh, this is a game. This is, this is crazy. And then, of course, to see the Enhance logo pop up, I know that Enhance is publishing it. They're not developers. But but to, to have that association with Enhance, who, you know, has done Res Infinite and obviously Tetris Effect. I mean, just Tetsuya Mizuguchi is a, you know, a VR god as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and for him to be associated with humanity, I mean, psh, right off the bat, blown away. I was like, here we go. This is going to be an excellent state of play. Yeah. So what an amazing amazing introduction to that show in terms of what they've already done enhance with tetris effect um it, it came at a real time for me last year i mean my uh my, my dad actually got admitted to um to, to hospital with a stroke uh which i never really had to, i guess i never really had time to process and, and properly kind of get to grips with um and then i was just playing the game and i played it in vr and you know i was going through the different the, the modes and the music and there was this point where i just stopped uh and i think i'd just finished the level and i just erupted into tears for like five ten minutes and i feel like that was the first time i'd kind of cried over anything in years um and it really touched the nerve and i feel like it kind of i i I found something in the game that really kind of just connected with me immediately and and i feel like that's that's something that they've managed to do with music so beautifully is they've managed to tie into people's emotions and really capture make it make it you can interpret almost anything from these games you can find some you can find yourself in any of these in in the music in in the environment in this in the, the way you play um and and so for me, I mean, I'm immediately looking forward to that purely on the emotional reaction that I had to that and also the emotional connection that I've had to these games in the past. So, yeah, no, it's, you know, when you when you talk about um, emotions and games and stuff, obviously everyone has a different story. And, you know, you were sorry, sorry to hear about your dad um, on top of it all. But uh, is he OK? Yeah, yeah, he's good now. Yeah, sorry. Good, <laughs> good, good. All right. Back. Yeah, that was a cliffhanger. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit. Yeah, apologies for that. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, no. It's a, in, in the 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 way they use music um, to really invoke um, emotional reactions uh, is is second to none. Uh, that the the theme of Tetris Effect uh, connected um, is is so touching and so uh, poignant yeah. that like you would never expect something like that to you know to to work its way into a Tetris game. Um, but yeah, it is beautiful and uh it just really yeah it really shows the talent um behind the team but also kind of says you know this is what vr as a medium can do um it's very very powerful for sure 
Definitely. Yeah, and I feel like the fact that I'm so glad to see they're continuing the support for VR in general. Uh, they, they've obviously recognised that uh, the Tetris Effect connection worked really well in VR, and there was such a positive reception to that. So I'm absolutely, I'm, I'm immediately invested in whatever this is, uh, whatever they do with VR, and however it's going to work. So uh, yeah, def that was that was a nice surprise highlight. And again, like you say, the way they've connected that into uh, the state of play introduction, like no one actually thought, oh wait, this is actually a game in in the intro. <laughs> I mean that was incredible right. I thought of part of the animation you know so uh, very very smart and yeah. I guess some of the other big stories obviously there was a big VR sizzle reel uh, so that, that looked at the fact that funny enough we were talking about this in Polish Paul last week uh, one of his games that his audience have been looking forward to is Gorn and that's actually been confirmed now for a winter release date for this window uh, this year on PSVR so uh, have your audience has been really looking forward to that too? Yeah it's, I don't think <laughs> like, it's, it's funny because you know in my book I'm looking at this and going oh this is kind of a glorified it's, it's an arena game obviously you just kind of beating the crap out of different people. I, I, I don't want to make this sound um, n negative, but man, like, I look at it and I go, oh, this kind of looks like, you know, Rec Room, but with, you know, to better animation. Um, and, and so for me, I'm like, okay, well, I haven't played the PC or PC VR version, so I kind of have to take everyone's word for it that, um, that it's, that it's really fun, that it's exciting. And the number of comments that we get uh, saying, like, you know, on PSVR this week, uh, is probably our most watched show. And I, the number of comments we get weekly from people saying, I'm, I just tuned in to see if there was an update on Gorn. I was like, oh, really? That, that's that, that's what you came here for? Like, you're just looking, you, that's all you care is Gorn. It's every day, man. There's, there's every single day we get a comment about Gorn. And and so, by like, I'm, I'm excited for Gorn through association. Like, because because our viewers are excited about it, I'm like, well, there must be something to be excited about yeah. here. So now I'm, you know, just by proxy excited. Yeah, I feel for me, I, I know very little about the game myself as well. Obviously, I'd heard of it prior to, to, to the podcast. And I've obviously had chat to Paul about it last week. But it, it's there's obviously a huge appetite for it out there and uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that PlayStation VR is getting that level of support by the end of the year as well which is which is amazing um, and I feel like as you say that obviously people are very excited for it so I'm glad they're going to get the game that they're very excited for so uh, looking forward to learning more about it in the coming weeks for, yeah, sure. for sure and uh, I suppose the real surprise of the show for, for, for many of us in the VR community was Stardust Odyssey because uh, that just seemed to kind of yet announced there and then right i mean is, is had you heard of that before was that a new release as far as i know that was the very first time they'd ever spoken about that game publicly um mm -hmm. i don't I, I you know did immediate um immediate google search and couldn't find anything right and then even the and then even the playstation blog there's a the developer posted uh like i mean two pages about about stardust odyssey and i was like oh great like here's some information that is sorely needed like we don't know what kind of game this is at all because obviously it looks it looks like bow to blood yeah. right yeah it has that same almost art style and uh you're it looks like you're controlling this big ship through the through the clouds. But you're like, oh, what are, what are we actually doing in this game? So I was so excited to read that PlayStation blog article. And when I was done reading the PlayStation blog article, I knew nothing more about how the game was played than when I started. I was like, they, they talked about, you know, like the what, what kind of motif they were going for, certainly, and a little bit about the environments. But I was like, okay, but still, what are we doing in this game? And so if, they, if their mission is to create an air of mystery around this game and get us going, what is this all about? Mm. Well, then mission accomplished, because I don't know anything yeah i mean i'm just i'm just looking for it now as we're chatting uh, so it's saying about nomadic life it was a central inspiration for the design and the environment needed to create some sedentary lifestyle aspects such as buildings and architecture away from convoys uh they talked about unreachable areas in the background setting the scene for anchoring points it's 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 really yeah it seems and, they, and they've also mentioned a little bit about sailing between convoys and open view environment and i really got that as you say that bound to blood vibe from it definitely but also there seems to be like this element of exploration in, in a futuristic environment I mean, we're already kind of exploring that a lot with No Man's Sky at the moment. A lot of people are kind of experiencing that for the first time in VR and there's that element of exploration there. But this seems to very much be in a similar sort of vein, but also a lot more structured and tailored to to a specific experience. So, Hey, you know, any... Any anytime they announce a new game for PlayStation VR, I, I I don't even care what it is. I'm like, if if somebody's out there creating something new, uh, I'm I'm interested. Mm. You know, so yeah, I think that further goes to the the experience of Sony continuing to show the support for PlayStation VR. I mean, a lot of these titles have been announced for the end of this by, by the end of the year. I mean, that's some whopper titles that we've ju we just had drops on us. And obviously, there was even a release, a stealth release, stealth drop yesterday with uh, LA Noir the VR case files, which has been rumored very heavily for a few months now, and all of a sudden there it is on the store yeah. and like 
Wow. <laughs> yeah, there it was. Uh, and then I'll tell you, um, I, I hopped in, hopped into our Discord server uh, after after we were done with the live stream, and everybody was like, "I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. Where, where is it? They said it was. They said it was available now. You know." And so, I mean, there was definitely some interest here. And I mean, it was it was I think an hour or so after the stream uh, ended that that it finally popped up on the store, and it was nonstop. I'm still looking for it. Still waiting for it. Where is it? Where's it? So I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they got hit with a ton of downloads the second it popped up on the store, including myself. Um, which, by the way, a 15 gig download with about a 10 gig 1.01 day one patch. I was like, okay, well, let's <laughs> yeah, it's like 25 gig to play uh, LA Noir VR case files. Yeah, did you, did you have a chance to play it yourself? Not had a chance to play it yet, but I watched some of your live stream, uh, so I saw that uh, it actually because I I've played and finished the original game so i, I loved I, yeah, I loved the original am i right in saying that the first case is the is the first case in the games or because it seemed very familiar to me so two two problems i'm having um LA one LA. i used to drink a lot and I, I don't remember things from anything before six years ago <laughs> so but and so and i so when i played that game you know it's like it, there's definitely some haze you know, for my memory um, but also it was, but also it was so long ago that I just don't remember at all, right? Um, and, and of course, and when I'm playing, when I'm doing live streams, uh, my my biggest problem doing live streams is that I'm trying to listen to the comments uh, through with speech chat, so that I can listen to people in the comments and I can respond to them. And that means I'm not paying attention to the story, which is why whenever I'm done a live stream, I have to go back and start the game over from scratch, <laughs> so I can really really know what it was I was just playing. Um, so yeah, so so I didn't recognize the case, but that doesn't mean anything at all that, that it, it very well could have been one-to-one -one the same same case from the game yeah i mean I, I feel like some of it is adapted it's not necessarily as you say line for line the exact same case but there were certainly aspects of it like the investigation the alleyway where he's kind of seen the blood stain or when he climbs up onto the roof that reminded me a lot of the game that i'd played before i mean i, I guess we, we we might as well move on to it now because i mean this was the game we were going to chat about for uh, the game of the week um right. and you've obviously been playing it you cited there were some issues with the controls uh and the the overall movement <laughs> yeah it's it, it just it just feels like uh, a developer that made a game for PSVR at launch, you know, with 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 no frame of reference, and said, okay, well, this is the best situ this is the best solution we could come up with, and and I, and I think that's probably the case. This is, you know, this is adapted from the, the PC VR version, and you know, walking around feels a little bit wrong, turning feels a little bit wrong, um, everything just feels a little bit off. Uh, even the even the interactions, you know, like pu pulling out your notepad from from your chest, it it doesn't seem like the but the the same buttons do the same things all the time. Like to put away things should always be the same button. Like it should just never be an issue. Um, and it just it just felt really confusing. I, even after an hour of playing, I was still fumbling with all the controls and not really sure. But I think it all it all gets made up for with the driving. The driving is incredible. I, I've I, you know other than I think Kona, I've never seen just driving implemented into a non racing game. So well, uh, yeah. it just felt really good to have two move controllers, you know, with you hands on the wheel and just driving yeah. through a big Female open city, and it looked beautiful. On top of it all, I was there's so many loading screens. Yeah, they made it part of the mini game, right? Because the, the speed car racing in, in in the actual game, where you can ride a 1940 speed car against AI opponents. So I mean, they've, they've kind of added that as a mini game as part of the self-contained experience within the game, which is really really yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, and with, with all the load screens that this thing has, which is another huge disappointment. Um, I was expecting that every time it would load in, it would only load in a certain part of the city and you'd be bounded by these invisible walls or something. But it seems like you can just, as soon as you get in the car, you can just go anywhere you want. Or even if you don't want to get in the car, it seems like you can just walk around the entire city, which is kind of amazing for, you know, for PlayStation VR with the PS4 hardware. Mm. Pretty crazy. Yeah. It came onto PC a few years ago and there were, there were people saying for a long time that would never translate to PlayStation 4. Uh, some people said it was because the move controllers wouldn't work with it. Some people said it was the resolution. Uh, others said it just it was not the kind of experience that would work on a PlayStation. So it's it's great that it's finally made it. Uh, but I mean, from your time playing it, is, is there any reason you feel what, wonder why it's taken so long, or is it is it just a case of one of those things? Or? I, I mean, I have. If there's one thing I've learned from years of doing without parole, is that I'm constantly surprised by the reasons we hear for things. <laughs> like like every developer is different. Every every yeah. developer has a different story. Um, and for me, I, I just think it was probably a monumental task getting this entire this entire city being able to stream in VR on PlayStation 4 because uh, it's 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 kind of incredible once you get in there and you go wow yeah. this is this is a really good looking game all 
the storefronts look different. They're not just copied and pasted blocks, you know, yeah. after an, yeah. one after another. It is a very, you know, unique city. And I, f- I found that the way with the original game as well. I mean, yeah. the, uh, the, the for me, the big thing with Ellen Noir was the, the motions of each character. So it was obviously recorded actors uh, and, and like the facial expressions. And so to kind of capture yeah. that originally in a game, that's why the game took so many years in development. But I mean, to then try and bring that into virtual reality, I mean, that must have been a painstakingly difficult, challenging experience. I can only imagine how, how how difficult that was. Plus, on top of that, an open world which you can explore by racing around, by by, by visiting different scenes. As a game, it was one of my favourites of all time. Uh, I probably would put it in my sort of top 50 um, because I just I found it for me it was so unique. I mean, it was obviously taking the the Rockstar template of what what Rockstar do to make a great game, but then they kind of also made it so it, it felt so different, like the kind of the investigation element of it, the puzzle solving element of it, the different choices you could make, whether to trust a person you're interrogating based on their facial expressions. I mean, that was just such a fantastic, dynamic, cool element that really made me think and put me on the spot a bit as a player. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to trying that in VR. It sort of seemed like they. They mixed uh, Grand Theft Auto with like old school point and click adventure games somehow, and it, mm. it, it melded together pretty well. I, I remember there being some issues uh, on the original LA Noir about certain reactions uh, didn't like w- certain conversation uh, tree dialogue choices, whatever, um, invoked some really strange responses yeah, from characters. Be like, oh, why did they just get upset about that? Like, it, it, it didn't seem like I, I remember there was some development problems, and it felt it felt like they kind of had to um, just kind of patch things up and make it make it playable, and then release it. There, there, there were certainly some issues, and I'm curious, you know, to curious to get back to this game. I'm only an hour and 15 minutes or so in. Um, I'm curious to get back and see how much of that um, that that jankiness translates to the rest of the game. I haven't even done an interrogation yet, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how that comes across for sure. Well, obviously, I won't obviously tell you to put a score or anything like that on it now, so I'll make sure to tune into Without Parole for when the review finally drops. Uh, but uh, so far, so good, right? So far, so far, so good. Yeah, I mean, if you, it's the thing is, is you know, everyone's got a different tolerance, a different threshold for for jankiness. You know, if, if like I, I almost every review I've ever published that if you can get over this issue, this issue, and this issue, it's a great game. <laughs> but the, but the question is, is can you personally get over this issue, this issue, and this issue? Um, yeah, and I, th- I think you're going to hear something similar in my final review. That's that's precisely it, and I f- it is an individual experience a lot of the time, and you, obviously your individual experience of that game can differ from someone else. Uh, but uh, as you say, it's also what people interpret from that. The audience can infer from that what they want from yeah, that. Yeah, oh, absolutely, for sure. And it's, it, there's nothing better than finding a reviewer that you personally uh, identify with. You know, you're like, oh, this person seems to like all the same games I do, and this person seems to dislike all the same games I do. Mm. And so that's why, you know, when people, when there's, there's certainly people who don't enjoy place, uh, without parole because they don't, they don't meld with my opinion. And I'm like, that's great that you figured that out so early. Like, go, I hope, hopefully somebody like Polish Paul or somebody like, uh, you know, Shughead, hopefully you find them to be the person mm. you can identify with right there's 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 we, we live in a great age where you don't have to rely on ign or GameSpot anymore um for you for your reviews there are mm. so many different voices out there that if you don't like me then there's definitely plenty of other people that you will like for sure absolutely yeah it, it's a, it that's, that is the beauty of the internet and that's the beauty of youtube that's the kind of the environment that is created for people uh, that there are as you say there are many many voices out there that could be heard and uh, and hopefully one that resonates with you definitely yeah. and actually that's a really cool time because uh, we've got lots of fan questions for you brian i feel like uh, when, when we announced on twitter that you were going to be joining us on, on the show i think a lot of people were really excited to uh, to ask you some questions so uh, i hope you're, you don't mind being put on the spot yeah i'll just drink a little more coffee and <laughs> suck it up <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, um, let's dive into this one. So I guess we'll take this question from Jimster71, who asked us, are you ever tempted to cover content for other headsets like the Quest or the PC VR? No, move on. <laughs> no. No, period. <laughs> no, he, and he, I, I think I said already that I'm, I've been a PlayStation guy since PS1. Like, I, I just love, I love, love, love what, what Sony has done for the industry. Um, they're always pushing things forward. And I've always gone yeah, where my favorite games are. Awesome. And, and, and PlayStation VR, and and you know PlayStation in general is always where my favorite games are. Um, the, if if you look at this generation of games um, and you see if you chart if you start comparing the exclusives on Xbox One uh, and the exclusives on Switch and the exclusives on PS4, uh, obviously everyone's going to have a different opinion of what their favorite games are and, and, and where to go for those games. Uh, but 
as far as my money's concerned, like PlayStation has been killing it since day one. Uh, and so that, that's that's why I'm where I am. Uh, and I, I own a Quest. I love my Quest, um, but I don't. But I have no desire to you know, to focus my energy on a Quest. Um, my, I love my PlayStation VR, and this is where I'll stay until Sony stops supporting PlayStation VR. Nice. Good answer. And thanks for the question, Jim Steyer. Uh, another good question as well we've got from Fabian, who's asked, the first time that I played Honor and Duty, I thought I was playing against you. Will you be lending your vo- <laughs> Was it you? <laughs> Will you be lending your voice to another game in the near future? Uh, and then the second part to that is, what are your expectations for PSVR 2? Yeah, I'll tell you, the I, I love jumping into a game, uh, you know, anonymously. And, and and just start and just start saying things like the enemy's capturing our control point, and they're like, no, no, it's not. What what? Like, and they're like, you sound just like that guy. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I like I like messing with people. Um, and I and I hear this all the time. Like, I, I'm actually shocked. I didn't think that I had a um a voice that was so recognizable. Um, but to, but to hear people constantly tell me that, oh, I thought I was playing against you because I heard your voice in the game. I was like, that's awesome. Um, v- very cool to know that people are are recognizing it. Um, and as far as far as uh, being in other games, uh, I do have one one voiceover gig lined up. Um, and and I don't think you know when we were reveal it no one will be surprised as to what it is um but it is something that i'm kind of interested in pursuing like as a side gig i don't know like i've, I've always been curious uh, about my acting ability if i have any acting ability i don't i don't think that i do um but you know like i've just but i've always been i've always been a musician a singer songwriter and then like of course you know the whole youtube thing rolled around and i never had a chance to kind of like try other things in my life and so because voice acting is kind of you know it, it works with what i'm already doing i'm 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 very curious to see if it's uh if it's something that i could you know do a little bit more of and so any any, any developers who yeah. uh who are listening i always try to get the word out that like it's something i'm interested in pursuing and, and i don't i didn't you know i didn't charge reggie at all um i was like dude i'm like this is something i don't i don't want to have money mixed up in this thing you know because i got to review your game and so that just gets real complicated i was like i'll do it for free plus it's probably not going to be very good um <laughs> So yeah, that's really cool, man. And uh, yeah, I suppose uh, what 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 expectations do you have of PSVR two? Uh, bigger, better, stronger. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't I don't know. I uh, I don't have any expectations. I have I mean I guess I have a lot of hopes, and that's you know that, they, that Sony's been paying attention to the competition. Um, like I said, I have a Quest, and it, they they better have been looking at the Quest and going, oh yeah, okay, wireless is pretty damn cool. Oh, you know, creating a you know a bounding box around you for for a play space is pretty cool. Inside out tracking is pretty cool. Analog sticks on you know on, on the on the move controllers is pretty cool. Uh, and, and my expectation is that Sony has been paying attention and is going to, it, it's so obvious that, that we just kind of had to work with what we had this generation. Um, you know, they're like, you, let's, let's use move controllers from seven years ago. It's like, are you kidding me? Like what, what, a, what a ridiculous concept, but and they ended up working great. I'm so happy that they did it. Um, you know, to save everybody money out of the, out of the gate, you know, I, obviously PSVR was so expensive on day one. It was like $400, 500 for the bundle with the move controllers. Um, that was such a huge cost, a huge barrier to entry that if we had inside out tracking and in new controllers, like, I mean, it could have been so much more expensive and even fewer people would have bought it. Um, so I'm, I'm just, my expectation is that they deliver the, the headset that we, that now that we're invested, that we, that we really want. So give it to us, Sony. Give, give it to us. Give it to us now. <laughs> give it to us. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like that. There's um, the the expectations for PSVR two are going to be very very interesting. I feel, as you say, they've they've set a barrier, uh, and I feel like there there are a lot of there, there are a lot of things that people want. Um, I'm not sure they're going to be able to encompass all of those things, uh, but it'd be very interesting to see what they do encompass for sure. Mm. And, uh, I'm very much eager to see how Sony respond yeah. to the changes in the VR market since VR VR one released. And I've got a question from Aisha. Uh, so Aisha asks, what is your favorite PSVR? A puzzle game yeah. and what story-based game would you recommend for scaredy game cats such as myself <laughs> scaredy game cats is such a great term i love it um man that's a loaded question uh no i mean you know favorite psvr puzzle game there's there's so many good puzzle games on psvr it, it's it's something that that works really really well um wi- i think witching tower that just came out recently I, th- I think if you go into that game knowing that it's a puzzle game first and foremost uh, it, there's there's some really great tangible puzzles in that game game 
Um, and when I say tangible, I mean like it really does feel like you're you're pulling levers and doing manipulating the environment to to solve the puzzles. And I think it's I think it's a beautiful game uh, stylistically. Um, but I think if I had to say my favorite one, I think I'll always go back to Static by Tarsier. Um, just an unbelievable use of the DualShock 4 in PlayStation VR. You know, so often, we, even earlier in this in, in this talk, we were saying, you know, that move controllers add so much to the immersion, but man, Static wouldn't work with move controllers. Static works so well with the DualShock 4. It really, if you play that game for an hour, you will suddenly forget that you can take your hands off the controller, that your hands are not locked inside of this little puzzle box. Um, and, and, and the way that they build up your confidence at the end of each puzzle and then completely destroy your confidence at the beginning of each next puzzle is brilliant i've never seen anything like it and i'm i'm so so proud to have that game in you know in in the playstation vr library it's just one of those titles that it's one of a kind you'll never see anything like it again unless they make a sequel which i'd love <laughs> yeah static's a great choice um it's 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 it was one of the early ones as well right which is which which is incredible because you feel like every game would be evolved or improved upon but uh like people would find ways to kind of evolve or use vr in exciting new ways but sometimes it, it is just games like static which what it did it did extremely well and it nailed the the, the user immersion experience of the control uh, to the control scheme to to the overall directive and objective of the game it got all those three balancing points perfectly aligned and uh you've got a fantastic game so yeah so that's a great choice uh and for her second question um what story-based game would i recommend for scaredy game cats in other words in other words not horror everyone knows that horror is my favorite Baby dolls. um <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh boy, I, I, I think uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little uh, little reveal and let you know that we're going to be we're going to be talking about Paper Dolls extensively okay. the, during the month of October. Um, very much looking forward to Jeremy King's response to, uh, to playing Paper Dolls. <laughs> but uh, but with that spoiler out of the way, I, I have to say Ghost Giant. Nice. Ghost Giant is. I mean, Ghost Giant has my heart, and I cried twice. Mm-hmm. It's not a terribly long game. <laughs> I cried twice during the you know the three hour experience whatever it was um the the way that that the way that game plays with scale and makes you feel hopeless and powerless um in in some really emotional situations is is beautiful and breathtaking um and, it, and it's a story that is that need, needed to be told and it was told in such a magical wonderful way um I, I never thought i could care about little um animal crossing style characters the way i cared for louis <laughs> like i just want to give him a huge hug yeah yeah and what they what the, what they've produced is for me it's i mean and obviously i know i would say that because we published it oh right <laughs> <laughs> i would say that um but uh it was it's a beautiful journey um and i feel it's a game that it connected with me on many levels as well because it, it really does talk about some very powerful issues that are relevant to to today's society i feel like if, if you've not given it a chance it's 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 a game that absolutely if you've got a playstation vr headset it's it really is it's a game worth exploring for sure good good choice as well it's not not a scary game no not a scary not game scary no game. unlike all of the rest of my favorites <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i know you you've got to, i think i've watched your top 20 list and there's a few in there i thought like not gonna be for everyone but uh <laughs> yeah, no for sure for sure i i need i need you guys to publish uh immortal legacy the jade cipher physically because it's it's one of my favorites and i just need that box on my shelf okay i don't think i've actually played that one so I'll, uh you, you've I've, I'll tick that on my list to check out but, uh. <laughs> oh, it's 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 one of those games that it's uh, it's you know it's very divisive. First and foremost, the control scheme turns a lot of people off. In fact, every time I hear somebody, uh, for the most part, but for the most part, when I hear somebody complaining about it, they go, "I played this game for twenty minutes and it's absolute garbage." And I was like, "Yeah, you know what? That was my thought." during the first 20 minutes too and then you keep pushing forward and you're like oh i I take it all back this game is amazing (laughs) um it checks all of my boxes it gives me the uncharted gameplay plus like you know some deep horror vibes and stuff it is it's it's a whole lot of fun i think we'll we'll close it out with one final question from justin stadowski who asks what's your favorite video game cover art justin stadowski meow meow j dow how's it going buddy (laughs) um Oh man, what's my favorite video game cover art? Uh, I, I mean, of all time, if we're not if we're not limiting this, then uh, I'd say Eco oh, uh, nice. on PlayStation yep. Two, except not the version that we got here in North America. That is a <laughs> disgusting embarrassment of cover art. It's like it's just terrible. Uh, but what you guys got, I think, over in the UK uh, and in most of Europe, uh, and I think the Japanese cover as well. I think it's just, it's this beautiful 
almost cartoony landscape with like a windmill in the background, almost stick figures uh, of Yorda and uh, uh, Nico. Is that, is that actually his name? Okay, it's been a long yeah, time I since so, I, yeah. the Wanderer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's like almost stick figures of them like running through the desert, like holding hands or something. And it's very, it's like this this thing that really somehow evokes emotion and solitude and and their their plight together. Um, very very simple art style. Um, and uh, and there was a, there was a study there was a study that was done at some point that apparently video games with with box art of people's faces sell better in North America than other regions. Oh really? And so and that's yeah. And, and I remember reading that a long time ago, around the time that this 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 box art change happened in North America. And I was like, oh, is that why we got this disgusting cover art for North America? Like, I wonder if it actually worked. Um, because I, I don't know. I don't know who did the study, but I'm like, this, they did not, they, they did not conduct the study with me. They didn't ask me any questions because, <laughs> man, you guys get the best cover art for sure on that one. Yeah. And I feel like that, that actually kind of gave you an idea of the game as well. I mean, it, like the fact that you are essentially holding hands together throughout the entire game, uh, you kind of get a feel of the environment that you're going to be exploring you're going to get a feel for what you're going to be doing in that game uh and as you say it's quite simplistic but also it's very emotive uh, it really does draw out some some feelings uh that when you're looking at it mm-hmm. uh, and i also find similar fun with uh, shadow of the colossus as well where you sort of like just even though it's a big hulking creature on the box uh again you saw the environment surrounding it and you saw kind of the uh the yeah. representation with it with the horse rider um so yeah i think they really nailed their cover arts for definite so that that's a that's another solid choice i would agree with you there for sure but maybe yeah. not north american one not north america no <laughs> no, no no absolutely <laughs> not I, I am I, I will say i'm pleased that when they did the remasters um that they they brought back the the proper cover art for us it was nice <laughs> it's awesome well thank you so much for joining us today brian that is going to do it for today's show thank you for everyone for tuning in we hope you enjoyed this latest edition of the pipcast tell everyone where they can find you brian and uh, and anything else you want to promote this is your time to do it uh yeah uh, obviously you know the the youtube channel is where we live and breathe so youtube.com slash without parole games uh that is that is our that is my entire life um you know we uh you can find us on twitter at parole games you can find me personally on twitter uh at that would be dark for all you death note fans out there you know what i'm talking about and uh and just and i want you to stay tuned because uh man in just in just a couple weeks we're going to be doing uh the the 2019 psvr award show and uh that's right it's going to be a very big deal it's going to be very exciting and uh, i think you're going to be really excited about all the presenters that we've got lined up uh every every year we want this to be bigger and better than the year before uh so definitely come subscribe to uh without psvr without parole uh and turn your notifications on so you know when that's happening yeah and i just want to say publicly brian uh last year's show was amazing uh congratulations for all the hard work you did on that uh, i know that took a lot out of you and uh, but it was also a, a fantastic show it was really well presented and uh, very much looking forward to seeing what comes from uh, 2019 show yeah man absolutely i think uh I, I think again just bigger and better every year that's that's the goal definitely <laughs> so thank you so much Ray. no problem at all my pleasure man like i say thank you for for what, everything you're doing for the vr community it's awesome uh so if you want your questions answered during a future show reply in the comment section below or send us a message on your preferred social platform and we'll do our best to answer them you could even win yourself some goodies so to everyone whose question was answered earlier you're going to receive a perp games game so congratulations to you we'll be in touch after the show what would you like to see in future perp casts sound out below in the comment section as we're looking to make this a show that's as informative and interesting to you as possible you can find perp games on facebook you can tweet us at perp games subscribe on youtube using the link in the description below you can also find us on discord instagram linkedin and get all the latest news on our products on perpgames.com thanks for listening and we'll see you next time